is it relevant to the uh, why it's really relevant uh, to the cost action because it's about uh, nanocomposite coatings in two dimension uh, containing carbon nanoplatelets graphene oxide actually but it can be converted to carbon or, or graphene type of particles which have been assembled by by the so-called layer by layer technology or technique lab technique uh, basically uh, this research uh, revolved around uh, the fabrication of transparent conductive coatings it's a little bit similar to Dr. Aravind's uh, previous talk, but it was there, there about pressure sensor. Here it's about uh, transparent uh, conductive materials. Basically, that was that is the motivation as a kind of a small prototype we wanted to do. How we did it is by uh, uh, polyelectrolyte assisted layer by layer assembly of graphene, oxidized graphene uh, particles, and uh, by reduction of the, the, uh, the particles, we can uh, controllably de deposit uh, carbon films uh, with optimized performance for uh, as a transparent conductive material. Um, without going to details here also, uh, optoelectronic devices uh, will rely much uh, on uh, carbon, the usage of carbons because these photovoltaic applications they uh, they need to be they need to transmit the visible light they need to be have low resistivity and also mechanical and chemical stability as was already this, uh, mentioned by uh, my colleague uh, uh, from Manchester uh, the conventional uh, transparent coatings uh, or transparent light coatings uh, are made of metals, but they are still absorbing a lot of light, so they are not actually uh, uh, transparent. Uh, the semiconductor based films, which are uh, kind of the industry standard recently, everyone heard about the indium dioxide, indium tin oxide, the ITO coatings, and they are working really fine. Uh, they are conductive, they are transparent, but also they are expensive and fragile and chemically rather unstable. Uh, so uh, advanced coatings, uh, there are several types of advanced coating. One of it is, is graphene and it's already used, uh, but uh, there are versatile preparation technologies uh, which uh, could be used. Actually, the story uh, for the layer by layer deposition of the oxidized graphite is not new at all. It was even published before the discovery of graphene in 1996, uh, uh, which has related uh, which is related to United States. Uh, group and the Hungarian group, actually my PhD supervisor uh, um, was also involved uh, in that research. So I, I also, during my PhD, deposited these graffiti carbon nanolayers by self-assembly. And the, the present study is, uh, let's say the optimization or imp is about improvement of the deposition conditions and the post uh, deposition treatment to convert the graphene oxide film to carbon films. So basically what we use here in, I am chemist and we are chemists here in, in, in Seged and don't use CVD and so on, it's physical exfoliation methodologies, but we, we work with aqueous colloid particles. So what we need uh, for the deposition is to have uh, liquid ex exfoliated uh, particles of graphene oxide. I guess it will be a little bit related. Uh, uh, it's related with the next talk by uh, Professor Dalton, who is talking after me. Uh, uh, we could use Langmuir blood jet deposition. I'm not. Have, I don't have time to talk about this, but we also have this layer by layer self assembly technique, which is quite simple. We need to have a charged uh, uh, substrate uh, in, in the present. Uh, um, uh, here we use quartz actually, and the quartz uh, can be uh, decorated by a cationic polyelectrolyte, a polymer molecule, which is which sticks on the surface. Okay, it's not they are not like spheres, but uh, they are more or less globular in shape. Uh, okay, uh, but definitely not as an isometric as the carbon platelets. Uh, and when we deposit these uh, positively charged macromolecules on the surface, the ch surface charge is effectively reversed. And now we can create a monolayer, a monoparticulate layer uh, of, of graphene oxide on top of this polymer coated glass. And then we repeat uh, these kind of uh, deposition uh, steps layer by layer. So one layer of graph polyelectrolyte, one layer of carbon, one layer of polyelectrolyte, one layer of carbon. We can uh, control the nanostructure very well. So here are the, the polymer molecules on the glass. 
uh, we created one monolayer and then we can create a nanoparticulate film from this carbon. So this is what we have, we term as a bilayer of the polyelectrolyte and the graphene oxide. And uh, after repeating these steps, uh, we can uh, cycle it. So we, uh, with the cyclic deposition, we can create a multi-layer, which I denote here in this talk uh, as the polymer PDDA, polyethylite and GO and repeated N times. So this is a bilayer and we can repeat the bilayer deposition N times and we create a multi-layer by this. If we have only a monolayer of this uh, composite film, the, the, uh, uh, the polymer graphene oxide, uh, the particles are clearly visible by uh, atomic force microscopy. Uh, we can confirm that they are super thin, they are one nanometer thick, except when where they are overlap. So what you see here, the yellow is the, the pure uh, glass or quartz surface, and the particles are formed here as an islands or continents over the let's say the ocean or something like this. So there are a lot of uncovered uh, surface sites, but uh, we have particles deposited and there are some overlapping of the particles. This is of course not good for transparent coatings because uh, uh, the particles, although they are overlapping, they could conduct the electricity. They have particle, they ha only have a partial coverage. And this means that the, the, the electrical pathway is actually discontinuous here. In the, in the uh, right hand uh, path, we have four gaps. In the, uh, in the left hand part, we only have one gap between the particles. So we need to optimize the surface coverage of the particle. Uh, and also we have to optimize the conductivity of the, of the particles themselves. So there is a two level organization or optimization. First to create a good monolayer, uh, uh, a smooth monoparticulate layer of the car particles to, to increase the surface coverage as high as possible. And then to, to convert the uh, uh, fairly uh, not so well uh, conductive actually can be insulating the, the graphene oxide particles can be insulating, but by uh, chemical conversion to graphene, they become conductive actually. Uh, how we optimize the surface coverage uh, by changing the deposition time during the process and the concentration of the, of the, uh, of the particle suspension and the polyelectrolyte, we can uh, really tune or control very well the optical absorption of the layers, which are related with the optical film th thickness. So by time we can, we can tune uh, the coverage and we can also see, for example, that to create a monolayer, uh, if we have a dipping time of only one minute, only a few particles have time to actually stick to the layer, to the surface of the, of the, of the glass or quartz. Five minutes is, is much better, 10 minutes, is, is uh, better, we, we don't really get a full part, uh, coverage after the deposition of one layer, as you can see here. Uh, so five minutes deposition is something like a compromise to, uh, to create a, a, a graphene oxide layer. We also can tune the pH of the dispersion uh, by which the aggregation of the graphene oxide particles can be uh, controlled, actually we are a good liquid dispersion at, at alkaline pHs where the particles have a large enough charge to, to separate better, uh, uh, separate better from each other and we, we can create a single layer graphene oxides in solution. And uh, the last part uh, is the optimization of the conductivity. We can treat uh, the, these deposited layers, but we have it here. This is a monolayer, but we can create the multi-layers. And after film deposition, we can uh, subject the films to different uh, uh, treatments by uh, chemical uh, reducing agents, hydrazine, or thermal decomposition or UV radiation are various ways to, to achieve a larger, uh, hopefully large conductivity. And we what find here is that all these kind of treatments uh, uh, reform the extended aromatic pi electron system and increase the hydrophobicity of the, of the systems. But to, to have a good transparent conductor, uh, we need to characterize not only the, uh, the optical properties, uh, which is basically the absorbance at, uh, in the visible range at a certain uh, 
uh, wavelength, but also the sheet resistance or the electric conductivity of the, of the films, which we did by collinear, collinear four wire measurements. And basically we calculated a, a factor of efficiency or goodness factor. The higher uh, is the sigma, this kind of transparency of conductivity, the better mat uh, the material is in terms of transparent conductivity. So what we found actually that uh, the combined treatment of chemical reduction and heat treatment is the best to, to have a high transparency of conductivity. These methodologies by themselves uh, are not really efficient, but their combination is better, except the UV treatment is not, not needed. So the best if we treat the films by hydrazine and uh, heat treatment. And uh, you can see here actually the pictures of the deposited layers. You can see that they are not transparent completely, but quite transparent or rather transparent, depending on what is the motivation of the uh, or uh, what is the, let's say, quality requirement, but we can definitely tune the, the visual appearance of the films as well as the electric con uh, properties uh, described by this sheet resistance. So just to compare finally, uh, the efficiencies of our films highlighted in green uh, as compared to, to literature data, they are quite, they are not that good, but they are competitive uh, in terms of, uh, uh, transparency of conductivity and to note graphene uh, type of layers are much cheaper than the indium type uh, uh, indium tin oxide films so they are they are uh, they are quite good and this is our main conclusion that if you want to to create such kind of layers or carbon nanocomposites or graphene nanocomposites with polymer without any uh, all these kind of things our uh, chemistry laboratory is good for um, uh, collaboration. So let me know if uh, uh, you are interested, not only in, in co uh, transparent conductivity, but in any kind of application, which is good for the cost action. And actually the, for the cost action, this kind of publication possibility is also interesting. If you work with uh, uh, ultra thin films of any kind of layered materials, uh, that's a, a uh, good opportunity to submit your paper in uh, this open access journal. And uh, I would like to thank here the uh, support of our laboratory and the colleagues who, who have been involved in the, this talk. And basically I'm finished and uh, waiting for your questions if you have any. <laughs>